Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make sure your Microsoft Access database will run properly on both 32-bit and 64-bit versions of Access. This one is for the programmers. So if you're not a VBA programmer, go watch my Intro to VBA video and become one. I'll put a link down below. For all of the rest of you who've had to upgrade 32-bit databases to 64-bit and you get that compile error message that you see there on the screen, this video is for you. Today's question comes from Ethan in Hastings, England, one of my Platinum members. Ethan says, I just upgraded my 32-bit to 64-bit office and my access database, which I've been using for years, is now telling me the code in this project must be updated for use in 64-bit systems. Please review and update declare statements and then mark them with the pointer safe attribute. What do I do? Well, Ethan, you're not alone. I've been getting asked this question at least once or twice a month ever since the 64-bit version of Access came out in, I believe, 2010. Now, at first, I honestly didn't recommend that people upgrade to Office 64-bit unless they absolutely needed it. The major benefit with 64-bit was with Excel because some people have really, really large spreadsheets and Excel gives you a lot more flexibility that way. Although my personal opinion is if you've got a huge gigantic spreadsheet, that data probably should be in Access anyways, but that's a whole different topic. But 32-bit was still the default installation until I believe 2013 or 2016. So at first, it wasn't a big deal. If you wanted 64-bit, you had to manually switch the setting when you set up Office and you had to install 64-bit on purpose. Now, 64-bit is the default installation. So people who are upgrading from, say, 2013 to 2016 or 2019, they're getting 64-bit installed, whether they want it or not, and their databases aren't working. Yes, you can uninstall it and go back to 32-bit if you want to, but most people don't want to do that. And no, you cannot run both versions of Access or Office in general on the same computer. You have to have two different computers to run the different versions. Some of the other problems with 64-bit is that it may not be compatible with ActiveX controls or third-party objects. Now, I usually avoid those anyways. I don't like using things that aren't built into Access, but a lot of people use them. So if you have a database that's using ActiveX controls, like the file dialog picker, the color picker, those kinds of things, they may not work. Microsoft has upgraded a lot of them, but there's a lot of third-party objects, especially people who are running databases that were built in you know, 2000, and that company is no longer around, if you upgrade access, you, you're out of luck. Plus, and this is something I don't understand why Microsoft did this, 64-bit access still has the 2 gigabyte file limit. I don't know why they didn't upgrade that. The major reason why most people's databases won't work is because you have to update Windows API calls in VBA to work specifically with 64-bit access. Now, if you don't know what a Windows API call is, if you haven't done any programming with Windows API calls, then this video probably isn't for you anyways, unless someone else built your database and you're going to have to figure out what they did. But basically, a Windows API call is a special bit of programming where you can have access go out to Windows and use one of its features that are built into the operating system, like browsing for a file, for example. There's a file dialog. You can use the Windows file, file picker so you don't have to go in and make your own. All right, there's a sleep function I'm going to show you in just a minute where you can have access pause that's built into Windows. All right, Windows application programming interface. It's how you can get access to use other code that's built into Windows or other applications. There's APIs for Excel, Outlook, right? We use the Windows API and the Outlook API, for example, to send email through Outlook. Okay, they're basically programming languages, or not languages, but they're programming extensions, if you will, to use other programs. Now, if you compile your database and it runs, fine. Most Access databases, if you're not using Windows API calls or ActiveX controls, they'll run just fine on both 32 and 64-bit Office. So if you're not getting this error message, don't worry about it. You can stop watching this video now. But if you're learning VBA and you, like me, I like to find new bits of code all the time in books and online, and I like to incorporate them into my database. If you get this error message about the 64-bit thing, then continue watching. I'll show you what it means. 
Okay, now I do have two different computers running 32 and 64-bit access. Kind of have to because I teach this stuff and I have to be able to make both types of databases. So we're going to start off on my system here that's running 32-bit. All right, like a lot of you have older databases that were built under 32-bit. Let's open it up. All right, this is my Tech Help free template. It's a free download from my website. You can go grab a copy if you want to. Now, most of you have 32 and 64-bit versions and never noticed a difference because if you have the ACCDB file, the full version of this file, which is what I give away on my website, then it really doesn't matter if you are using 32-bit or 64-bit because I don't have any code in this database that is specific to one version of another. I don't have any Windows API calls at all in here. All right, they normally would be down here in a module. So if in your office or wherever you're distributing your database to, or if it's just you, right, if you don't have any Windows API calls or third-party controls or ActiveX objects, you're probably just fine. Your database will run fine on every machine in your office, whether they got 32 or 64-bit. Okay, but let's put some Windows API calls in here. So let's go to Create and then Module. The VBA code window opens up. Now, if you've never done any VBA programming, you're probably in the wrong class. <laughs> Go watch my intro to VBA class uh, if you haven't already. I am going to copy and paste in here a real simple API declaration. Control V paste. I already copied it. All right. It's public declare sub sleep. And it's from library kernel 32.dll. And basically, it puts the computer to sleep for a certain number of milliseconds. So this is handy if you're executing code and you want to put a pause in there. Right, like you want to show, like, you know, you want to count from 1 to 10 and go 1, 2, 3. There, there's reasons why. Like in my, uh, my email seminar, for example, I have it so that you can put a little pause between sending emails. Because if you're using Gmail or your internet provider has a maximum cap on how many emails you can send in a given amount of time, like within an hour, you, you know, you, you can put a, like a, a two-minute delay. All right, that's what the sleep function is good for. Let me show you how it works. So now that we have this, I'm going to save this. It's going to be a module. I'll give the module a name, just my global modules, for example. That's fine. All right, and now you'll find that guy sits right down here. You have to declare those in a global module. Okay, but now my main menu, I got my little Hello World box right here, right? And if you haven't watched my video where I build this template, the blank tech help free template, go watch that. It explains how this thing works. All right, in the code in here, if I click on it, all it does is status Hello World. But I'm going to status, let's, let's status like 1 to 10, okay? So I'm going to dim x as an integer for x equals 1 to 10, next, right? And in here, I'm going to say status and then, you know, count down or count up or count or whatever, right? Count and x, okay? Save that. And now if I open that back up again, if I click the button, it just goes by immediately, right? There's no delay in there. Let's put a delay. Now, normally, Access VBA doesn't have a command like that, but we can now use sleep. So I can say sleep, and then how many milliseconds? Let's go 500 milliseconds. That's half a second. Okay, save it. Come back out here, click, and you can see it counting up now, right? Every half second. So that's just an example of one type of API. There's, there's hundreds of them. There's so many of them. Okay? Now, let's say... I'm going to share this in my office. So I'm going to close the database down. And I'm going to send this over to Joe, my coworker, but he's got 64-bit access on his computer. So let's see what the, let's see what happens there. Okay, here I am over on my 64-bit machine now. I'm going to open this up. All right, the database loads just fine. Let's click Hello World. And oh, there we go. Compile error. There's the error message. The code in this project must be updated for use on 64-bit systems. Hit OK. Now, nine times out of ten, you can get away with just putting one extra word in that API call. Let me hit stop here, stop the compiler. All right, public declare, right after the word declare there, put pointer safe, P-T-R-S-A-F-E. That's it. And that will work most of the time. Not all the time, but most of the time. Certainly most of the code that you'll get from me if you're one of my students and you have one of my older databases that you might have downloaded from my website a while back. All right, pretty much everything that I've released, this is all you need to do. It won't work with everything you'll find out there. I'm not guaranteeing that it's the, it's the, it's not the cure-all. 
but it will fix 90% of the problems. Okay, now let's give it a compile, right? Debug, compile, you should always do this before you're distributing your database, all right? Everything's fine, no error messages. Close it, and then click go, and it runs, and it works, okay? Now, what did that do? Absolutely nothing. Functionally, internally, pointer safe doesn't do a thing. All it does is it tells Access that, hey, I've checked this function, and I'm certifying as the programmer that it's safe for 64-bit systems. That's it. That's all we did. The reason why they make you do that is because if you're not careful, especially if you're using pointers, which is a more advanced programming thing that I haven't even covered in my developer classes yet, but if you're using some data types and you mix and match them between 32 and 64-bit and you're not supposed to, you can cause problems. Access can hang. You can corrupt the memory. There's all kinds of crazy things that will happen. But generally, this is fine. So pretty much you just have to go through your code. Everywhere you see the word declare, just put pointer safe after it. Now the good news is, even if I go back to my original 32-bit database, let's open that back up again. All right, even if I go back here, if I take this code and I put pointer safe here, all right, it should still compile, okay? In the newer versions of Access, 32-bit Access will run just fine if you put that pointer safe in there, and I can still run the code, all right? So if you've got the same version of Access, like 2016, I've got a 365 subscription, so mine's roughly equivalent to 2019, then you can put that in your code and still use the same database on 32 and 64-bit machines. However, problems will arise if you've got different versions of access in your office, like someone's on 2013, someone's on 2016, and you've got different bit versions too. So there's a lot of little things that you still have to deal with. I personally strongly suggest if you've got people using the same database, everyone should have the same version of Access and everyone should have the same bit version too. So have everyone using, you know, 365 subscription with 64 bit or, you know, Access 2016 32 bit. Just make sure everybody on your platform is the same and you shouldn't run into these problems. Now, there are some other issues you might have to take into consideration. One of them is using pointers, and I will discuss that and a bunch of other stuff in the extended cut for the members. In the extended cut, we will learn a few more things about migrating from 32-bit to 64-bit, including the new VBA7 compiler pre-directive for maintaining multiple versions of your database. We'll also talk about the new data types like long long and long pointer and when you would need to use them. And we'll discuss issues that come up with maintaining multiple versions of your database for 32-bit and 64-bit users with possible different versions of access and how that changes the way you have to distribute ACCDE files. All of that coming up in the Extended Cut for members. Silver members and up get access to all of my Extended Cut videos. How do you become a member? Click the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full-length courses found on my website, and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select All to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the Show More link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. 
Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my Tech Help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free Access Beginner Level 1 course, more of my Tech Help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.